How's it going, guys? Guys, I'm Newbie Pals. I'm Alice in Wonderland, your favorite cutie trans girl, and there's something you need to see. And it's me! It's me doing makeup! F yeah! <laughs> Are you ready? Because I think this is going to be a bit of an out-of-body experience for you. Out of my body. Get the f*** out of my body! But, today, we are going to be doing a makeup look. Now, normally, when I would do a makeup look, in order to keep it interesting and to serve the YouTube algorithm, I would do something really f***ing stupid. Like, I'd tie my hands together, or I'd put them in handcuffs, or maybe, in fact, in the next video, if you all like this video right now, maybe I will do a shock collar makeup challenge. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, I don't have a shock collar. Anyway, today, I thought I would just do a normal, bang-up, old makeup tutorial, okay? Just to show you how I do my makeup, no hands tied, no bondage involved, and give you a couple tips, because a lot of the people clicking on this video are probably gonna be trans women as well, not all of you, but like, you know, I'm just saying, as a generalization, a lot of, a lot of you are gonna be trans women, and you're probably quite new to makeup, or maybe you just wanna get better at makeup, I'm here to give you a few tips. This video is for you. I'm also just gonna f around and make some wacky, wavy, inflatable, flaming arm chew man makeup. That's not true. I was just being eccentric. <laughs> uh, it's amazing. Anyway, but today's makeup look was voted on by you. You decided which colors I was going to do, and you voted for Vaporwave. So, as you can see, today we're doing a cyan and magenta makeup look. Stay tuned, and you'll see how I did this. But, before we get started, I believe we have some unfinished business to attend to. There she is. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Game Show Alice is going this to be forced to be a sub for this entire video. You all asked for it. <laughs> Show them, Game Show Alice. Uh... A few weeks ago, Game Show Alice stole an episode. This is her comeuppance. Don't ever say that we're not fair. Isn't that right, Game Show Alice? Here I am, naked. In hindsight, I probably should have thought about how I was going to phrase that. Naked face. There's nothing on my face at the moment. I am wearing clothes. Anyway, let's get started. The first thing I do is not part of my makeup routine. It's part of my hair routine. Now, a lot of people have asked me how I do my hair, so I thought I'd quickly chuck it in this video. My hair is very thick and dense, and it does whatever the f*** it wants. It's like an immature child. It's like I'm a mother to a teenager made of hair. That's most teenage boys to be honest. It won't do what you want it to do. You have to fucking force the cut eye. Grab all of my hair. I tie it up very, very tightly. Just like that. And you see what that does is it puts a bunch of crimps in my hair. And when I eventually let this hair tie out at the end of the video, you'll see it all wavy. And then all I do is I chuck on a bit of hairspray. Anyway, I'm assuming you've already done all of your skincare. So here's how I do my makeup. I'll put the names of the products that I use like here, here, over my tits. Tits is a strong word that I really use. I've got a NARS concealer, it's really nice. One thing that I find really helpful for a lot of trans folk, a lot of us tend to have a lot of discoloration around the mouth and cheek area, and that's because of facial hair. It's just something, some of us can't avoid it. Now, let me show you how I deal with it. What you do, before you do any concealer or anything like that, is you do a little bit of color correction. Now, let me give you a bit of a quick crash course on this, okay? Anywhere on your face, be it facial hair or just natural shadows, somewhere you're gonna have a bit of discoloration. You can see for me, I've got a little bit of blue under my eyes. I've also got a little bit of bluish green around the top of my mouth, where my mustache would be. Now, a lot of trans folk have this, and that's totally fine. If you want it, if you totally want to get rid of it, laser hair removal is a really good way to do it. If you've got lots of blonde hair like me, you're gonna need electrolysis. But blonde hair isn't as much of an issue for makeup because it doesn't really cause a discoloration. I'm very lucky on that front. I mostly just have blonde hair. But what you can do if you have lots of dark hairs here is you can counter that color. For me, I, my blush happens to be the perfect color to counter it. So I just grab a little bit on my fingertip and I just dot it over the top and it'll look quite red but then once you put foundation on, it will actually counteract the darkness. This is a total life hack for trans people out there. I'll put on screen a chart showing what sort of color corrector you should use depending on the discoloration that you have. It really varies. My number one tip in all of makeup is to experiment and find what works for you. So find a color corrector that corrects your discoloration. Mine might be different. Any sort of powder, really, I'm sure even eyeshadow would work. Then I go to concealer. I've got a little bit of blue under here, 
So I like to put a dab of concealer there and I like to put a bit over my mustache. Oh yes, cover up the lies and deceit. All that does is it makes my face look a lot more flawless. Foundation. For me, I just put it around my mouth and on my eyelids as a prep for eyeshadow. Depending on what your skin looks like, you may need to do something different. And I'll say it again, my number one tip, find what works for you. Because it's all very well and good looking at a load of makeup tutorials on the internet, but everyone's face is different and what works for my face might not work for yours. Now, blush. Important thing with blush, you don't want to have too much blush, okay? You don't want to look like Jake Gyllenhaal's just asked you on a date. I wish that would happen. And just dab it on your cheekbones. Whenever I post on r slash makeup addiction, they always tell me I should use more blush, so I'm gonna try and use more blush today and we'll see how that looks. Now. Uh. What are we doing next? Well, this is where the vapor wave comes in. Cause this is when I do my eyeshadow. And I love eyeshadow, okay? Eyeshadow is like my favorite thing on the planet. Oh, cheesecake's pretty good. But as mentioned earlier, today we have a special color palette. You voted on it, this is what you get. So we're gonna go for a Vaporwave color palette today. That is Cyan and Magenta. Now, to do that, I'm going to use the Hot Pink from my Chi Chi OMFG palette and the McCaw and Take Flight shades from my Revolution Bird of Paradise palette. Bird of Paradise? Fly away! I'm kidding, I wouldn't do that. I'm not charitable enough to free caged animals. Anyway, let's get started. So, we are looking for some bright fucking color, okay? I love color. I want so much color all the goddamn time. So I always use little sponge applicators to do my eyeshadow. And we're gonna start with a bit of cyan on my top lid. Top. I'm a top. Jake Gyllenhaal, I'm coming after you. That was a joke. For legal reasons, that's a joke. He would look cute in a maid outfit though. There's probably someone out there watching this video with a maid outfit right now. Now my applicators are double-ended. One of them is slightly thinner. That makes it a bit easier to get into those little tight spots in the corner of your eye. I really appreciate that. Here's another good tip you may have noticed already. If you want makeup to be easy, Learn to be ambidextrous, okay? <laughs> it's much easier to do this than to do this. I really hope someone is watching this video with a made outfit on. I've over applied my eyeshadow a little bit down there. That's no big deal. That'll happen to you eventually. You can fix that with a little Q-tip. And so the trend continues where I stab myself in the eye every time I do a makeup tutorial. Ow. Okay, now this is where things get interesting. The other color is magenta, and cyan and magenta are pretty far apart on the color. Wheel. I've actually not done this before, but here's the idea I have. So I'm gonna have cyan on my top lid, and then I'm gonna have a really, really bold pink under eyeshadow. And I think that might be totally boring, as the kids would say. And yeah, we want real bright. I'm gonna go stupidly bright. Try not to stab myself in the eye again. Just make sure we've got a real, really bright flash of hot pink on the bottom. bottom. You're a bottom. <laughs> uh, this would be much more entertaining if I was wearing handcuffs. Now, something I like to do with my under eye shadow sometimes is Turn it into a bit of a wing. For most wings, right, if you're gonna do a long wing, here's a pro tip. You wanna aim for the point of the wing to be going up towards the end of your eyebrow. It's just geometry. And we'll do the same on the other side. You see, now what we have is the beginnings of a very, very dramatic cyberpunk sort of vaporwave looking eyeshadow. Super bright colors. If anyone saw me walking down the street, I would catch their eye, and that is exactly what I'm aiming for. Now, I know a lot of you aren't quite as confident as that, and maybe you don't want to attract too much attention. You can still take what I'm saying at value. I'll give you a little quick tip here for my trans friends just studying makeup. Don't go too dark. I know dark shadows are super alluring. Believe me, I know. <laughs> but 
there's something you gotta keep in mind, all right? And it is unfortunately a reality for most trans folk. Look at your face from side on, okay? Here's mine. You'll notice that I have a male brow. It's unfortunate, it's the reality. I've gotta deal with it. But what happens is it actually goes out of your eyebrow and then it actually cuts back into your nose. And what that does is it actually creates a ledge over your eyes, putting shadows onto your eyes. So your eyes are already really dark for most trans people. Believe me, I've met a few that don't have that problem. Look at your face, see where your brow is and make that decision yourself. And here's a photo just to prove, you know, that this is learned from experience. Start with light shadow colors, like a light brown. Once you put on mascara, it'll look dark. Trust me. Give it a go, see how it looks. You gotta make that decision yourself. Now let's continue. We're gonna do a bit of a gradient. So I'm gonna go back up here with a little bit of pink and I'm gonna blend it into this lion. Oh yeah, I'm looking ready to go out onto Night City and murder some fools. Now, I like to use a little bit of an inner corner highlight. I find it just brings my eye to life a little bit. I normally have a gold and a white. I'm thinking a white for today's rather than gold. Just because we're going kind of cyberpunk and I don't feel like it's a gold type of look. There we go, we got a sort of silver in a corner highlight, and what that does is that just makes your eyes pop a little. Yeah, look at that. I like that. Next so. Eyeliner. Pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> Pretend that didn't happen. I'm telling you. That, that was actually an order, and if you don't, I'm gonna send that thing, the thing that makes people into that, over. I've got two tricks for eyeliner. Don't skimp on it, okay? Spend the $50 and get a really good one. It is worth it. Generally what I want is a little fluid eyeliner. I've got What I've got here is I've got a double-ended one with a thin, fine tip and a thick tip. It's worth having an expensive eyeliner because it makes a huge difference. They'll last longer, they'll look better, and they'll be easier to apply and easier to get perfect. A lot of people starting out are very scared by eyeliner, and that's totally understandable and probably justified. What you want to do is you want to grab your eyeliner between your fingers, and you want to rest your palm on your jaw. Now what that does is that gives your hands a little bit of stability. The main problem a lot of people have with eyeliner is that their hands shaking and they can't quite do a fine line. What you want to do is you want to give yourself as much support as possible. Generally, when I'm doing my eyeliner in order to get the finest line possible, not only do I rest my hand on my jaw, I actually also have my elbow up against my mirror and bam, suddenly it becomes really, really easy to do eyeliner. Now, it's inevitable that you're going to f up your eyeliner. It's inevitable, it'll happen all the goddamn time, and it'll f***ing annoy the s*** out of you. Don't be afraid to just go in and pick at it with your nail, okay? Say if you... Let me give you an example, okay? I'm just gonna... I'm gonna f*** up my eyeliner for you. Bam. Here's how I would go about fixing it. Get the nail. Just put it there. And drag. And you can actually do that wherever you like, and you can even do that to make your eyeliner tips really sharp. Your fingernails can be really precise. It's a little hack for you. And I'm pretty happy saying that that's our eyeliner finish. Now, you may want to try big wings. Everyone loves big wings. Here's another tip for you. Eyeliner is extremely subjective to your eyes. It is probably the most subjective. Try out a few shapes, figure out what works for you. I tend to either do my eyeliner like this, and I also either go all the way into my inner corner or from halfway. Those are the ones that I found look best on me. If your eyes look very similar to mine, give them a go. Personally, I find that big, thick wings don't look good on me. They tend to disappear in the fold of my eye here. Practice makes perfect, makeup is fun, play around with it, see what you like. If your eyeliner looks like shit, don't feel bad. Maybe you just haven't found the shape that works for you yet. With that said, our eyeliner is done today. So why don't we move on to the next section, which is mascara. 
Now, eyelashes are really easy to be honest. So I have a lash curler and a lash curler is pretty easy to use. You just put it on there like that. Try and get them close to the base of your eyelashes, but not too close. You don't want to be clipping skin, that hurts. Hold it for a few seconds, looking good, and then try and get just the tip. Uh, I only ever get just the tip. I do get it a lot though. But uh, here's my mascara. And I mean, it's pretty simple here. You just put a bit of black on it. Oh, this looks good. I like it. Few other things you can do obviously as you saw in the beginning i only put foundation around here if you want to do a full face you know you do you but i like to have a little bit of texture in here i don't want to cover up all of my skin texture with foundation that's just me personally you might be different i think my uh, blush might have faded away so i'm just going to put a little bit more on more on <laughs> as you i'm kidding don't don't click off the video there we go now i'm looking really pink oh my god <laughs> the call finally came in jake gillenhall's gonna take me to dinner uh, that's why I'm blushing so much. For the most part, a lot of people would call it done now, but not me. So I want to look as cute as possible, okay? And throwing in a few little freckles can just make your eyes really pop. There's the interesting thing about that, okay? So we've got a big bright color under our eyes and it looks fantastic. Putting fake freckles on really draws attention to your eyes, interestingly enough. It kind of breaks up the big white, bright section down here and it almost camouflages your cheeks so that you pay more attention to your eyes. So what I do is I take a waterproof brow color and I just dot it on a little. Bam, bam. You know, pretty simple. Don't go too dark. You just want little light freckles. You want to make sure that you've got them random. You don't want them to look like they're in a pattern. So really, you just got to look like a toddler trying pointillism for the first time. That could be misconstrued. That is, for all intents and purposes, the makeup the makeup done. <laughs> this is how I like to look in terms of makeup. I would consider this makeup now finished. Onto the finishing touches. Lipstick is great, it's hot as f but I often find lip gloss just makes me look super kissable. So I always do a little bit of Revlon the gloss. I've just got the clear one here. That is the least attractive thing I've ever done. <laughs> Kablooey. Thin. And you're gonna love this because I've been saving this until now. <laughs> I'm excited about this actually. I have matching earrings. Ooh. -wee. How fing cute is that? Oh my god. I love it. I'm so cute. Oh my gosh. If you're not squealing with delight once you finish your makeup, you haven't done it right. Then, for those of you that wanted to see how I finish up doing my hair, here's what I do, okay? I lay it all out. As you can see, it's all wavy and crimped now. What I do is I actually give myself a bit of a middle part. I do an extremely quick spray of hairspray. Wait five seconds. And then I part it here, pull it over. The hairspray will give it a little bit of life. Just make it, oh yeah, a bit of volume there. And then one more spray.
the longer one this time. And then I just hold everything in place, then I tie back this side. And bam, you are now fully equipped to do Alice in Wonder One and here, should you wish to. Then I check on my uh, glasses and we're all good. Let me throw some glamour shots up on the screen. This here is our Vaporwave look, cyan and magenta. I hope you like it. Let me know what you think in the comments and let me know what sort of colors you want me to see try next. I have a really amazing fire gradient look that I love doing that I think you'll want to see next. So then, why don't we just one last time go over all the things we've learned here because a lot of you are probably new to makeup. Here's a few tips for you, okay? Number one, stay away from dark eyeshadow. Number two, rest your palm on your drawer when you're doing your eyeliner. If you can rest your elbow on the mirror, that's even better. Do it both. Both of them. It's you really good. And obviously be as close to the mirror as you possibly can be. Next, spend the money, get an expensive liquid eyeliner. It's just, it's worth it. It really is. If you've got stubble that's making your skin look blue or very masculine around this area, you can try using a color corrector underneath your foundation to try and take away that blue and neutralize the stubble look. And last but certainly not least, my main tip to anyone that asks me how they can get better at makeup, practice, practice, practice. And I don't say that lightly, okay? Because I've been doing makeup for a long time and it took me a long time to get good, okay? It took me about six months of doing makeup every single day, of doing a full face every single day to kind of get good at it. It takes you a long time to try out all of these different techniques and find out what does and doesn't work on your face because it's all very well and good going and reading and watching a million makeup tutorials. That's great. It'll teach you all the techniques you could possibly need to know. But every face is unique and every face will look best with its own specialized type of makeup. You need to figure out what works best on your face. And you can only figure that out by practicing and playing around and trying different things. I've tried it all. I've tried really dark blush. I've tried really light blush. I've tried full face foundation. I've tried mouth only foundation. I've tried long, heavy, big winged eyeliner. I've tried small eyeliner. I've tried dark eyeshadows, light eyeshadows. I've settled on bright, vivid color eyeshadows just because I like them. Try things, play around, have some fun, just, just get into it. Honestly, makeup is so much fun. And if you just acknowledge that perhaps sometimes something that you try isn't gonna work and maybe you will look a little bit on that day. You just gotta kind of acknowledge that. It's not the end of the world. The next time you put on makeup, you'll do it better. Like, have fun, get into it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Has that been there this whole time? Did you weren't expecting to see Vore when you clicked on this video. Here we are. I bet you also weren't expecting to see a mukbang! <laughs> mm. <sighs> this is so good, you are missing out. Mm. Mm. Subway, foot long, chicken classic. Chicken is debatable. Could be human. Oh. God, that really is delicious almost delicious enough to make me forget that Subway sponsored a pedophile. I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you about my beliefs. Because religious people won't shut about it, so why, why would I? Here's what I believe. I am 23% sure that America doesn't exist. Just think about it this way, okay? 
Seeing is believing, and I've never seen America. It's just common sense. And I mean, if you imagine if I was right, that one in four chance that I'm correct and America really doesn't exist, the world has got a lot to answer for. Think about that. Can you imagine if America didn't exist? Where would all of the TV shows have come from? Where would all of the corn syrup? What about all of the f Where did Subway come from? You just don't know, eh? And if America really didn't exist, all of these products had to have come from somewhere. And my question is where, okay? Because I have a theory, all right? I've got a theory. And, you know, for the three people that haven't clicked off this video, you are going to have to listen to my theory now. And it's that Boris Johnson, okay? Every single one of his hairs, you can burn it and it has the ability to change something about the world. And as you can see, there's not much hair left on his head. So he's been doing something. And you know what, I think, I think he used at least maybe three or four of his hairs to wish America into existence so that he could have someone that is objectively somehow a worse politician than he is. Oh. I wonder where Game Show Alice is. Normally this is about where she would interrupt the video. I hate that bitch. She's the worst Alice, I swear to god. Like, you know, there are some pretty bad Alices out there. Skeptic Alice is just ridiculous. You know there's a f***ing beanstalk Alice? She just cry- she just climbs trees. Thinking she's gonna find some sort of magical beans or something. We've been trying to tell her that beans don't grow on trees. She won't fucking listen. What am I supposed to do? It's a health and safety hazard. Even her. She's nothing, nothing compared to Game Show Alice, who's just a pushy and awful bitch. She'll just barge into every fucking video she can. It's horrendous. And there's no stopping her. She would do. I don't know why I'm getting so worked up. It's not like she's in the room right now. This is good. It's a little bit cold. It's actually... I would even say... It's a little bit cringe. One last bite. Oh. <clears throat> anyway, I think Game Chimalis has had enough now. Ate me. Excuse me. Anyway, if you liked this video, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. You can even ding the bell if you're feeling extra cool. Leave a comment if you're feeling extra extra cool. If for some reason you enjoy my content. My Buy Me A Coffee link is in the description. Your donations help to keep this channel alive and I really, really appreciate it. I couldn't have afforded Subway if it weren't for your donations. And with that, see you in the next video.